Today is May 29th, 2022. My name is Dr. Autumn Cavanis, and I'm interviewing Mrs. Barbara Louise Foster Wilson for the Commemoration and Contextualization Initiative. We're on the University of Texas at Austin campus in the Moody College of Communication Studios. Thank you, Mrs. Wilson, for agreeing to this interview. You're quite welcome. This interview is being recorded and the unedited copy will be housed here on the campus of University of Texas at Austin. And please know, Mrs. Wilson, that if there's anything you do not wish to discuss, I will absolutely honor your wishes. Mm -hmm. On the reverse, if there are topics that you would like to discuss and I haven't asked you about those topics, please do bring them up. Lastly, if we need to take a break to get a drink of water or for another reason, just let me know. All right, certainly. Let's get started. Growing up in Austin, Texas, what were race relations like in your community and in Austin when you were in school throughout the years? I think back to the uh, nursery school and elementary. And I guess I have more remembrance when I was in elementary than in nursery school. But um, Austin set up practically most of the blacks lived in East Austin. And we pretty much had what we thought we needed at that particular time. Um, we had a theater that we, the Harlem Theater on East 12th Street. We didn't go downtown to look at the theater. We had our schools all in East Austin uh, with good teachers. And and I guess possibly a few little drive-in type things like Dairy Queen, and but we didn't really go to that very much because we ate at home. <laughs> Parents really cooked and we ate at home. But, um, and I guess I didn't really realize that there was a divide, but we were pretty well pleased where we were. And can you remind me, which schools did you attend from elementary to junior high to high school? Okay, I went to uh, Campbell, L.L. Campbell Elementary. Prior to that, I, I went to a nursery school, Mrs. Simpson's Nursery School, which was a one uh, room with, oh, I'm sure she had possibly 50 kids that she taught well. And then, uh, as I said, uh, L.O. Campbell was the elementary that I went to after then, and then to Keelan Junior High, and then L.C. Anderson High School. And I have to tell you this, the lady, Mrs. Simpson, taught so well that many of us that had gone to her, we didn't have to go to first grade. So you skipped first grade? Mm -hmm. Went to second. That's amazing. What had you heard about UT Austin before you came to school here? Early, nothing. I had not, I didn't know really much about UT. Um, I knew, well, I, later on, I figured we were not that far from UT, from where we lived. Um, but. As far as knowing anything about it, no, I didn't know very much about UT. That was a big school. Any idea about UT's reputation in our community, the black community, while you were growing up? No, I guess it just was not discussed. We didn't really discuss it. Um, but I guess I, I guess when it was closer to time for me to go to college, that's when I learned more about UT. Uh, basically, and, and I wanted to go away like a lot of my friends were going, but uh, my parents suggested that I go to UT because it was very inexpensive at that particular time, very inexpensive, and I could stay at home. Mrs. Wilson, 
Did you recall knowing about the Heman Sweat v. Painter case? Not at that time. I did not know about it. Were there any other civil rights cases in the news when you were growing up? No. I don't remember any. Talk us through how you decided to apply to UT Austin senior year, Elsie Anderson. I was urged by my parents. <laughs> I was the oldest of five. They intended for all of us to go to college. And uh, they knew that UT was an inexpensive school. Uh, somehow they found out about it. <laughs> And like I said, many of my uh, friends were leaving town, going to like uh, Howard University or Tennessee State. And of course, I wanted to go away too, but I understood that my parents really, um, they wanted all of us to go to school. So I didn't feel like I wanted to waste money going out of state, paying out of state fees when there was a university here in town. And when you applied, do you remember the term that you used for your race? <laughs> I guess it was Negro. You've given us some insight already, but how did your family feel when you finally said, you know what, I'm coming to UT? <laughs> they were happy because they were paying for it and uh, they knew they had some friends. Uh, who knew about uh, the tuition and things like that. So they were happy. Do you recall the application process and what that was like? Mm -hmm. I remember applying. I guess I remember more so the registration. It was really an ordeal. What was that experience like? Uh, so many people. I had not been used to such large crowds of people and the lines, waiting in line, and uh, we were at Gregory Gym. And not really knowing exactly what to do, but somehow we managed. I don't know. How did you get to campus each day? I rode the bus, and sometimes I walked. Well, the buses didn't run that regularly, and I would take out walking. I wasn't that far from uh, IH-35, mm, possibly maybe 10 blocks. 10 blocks? From maybe less than that, from 35. And once I crossed 35, you know, I was at UT. I didn't have a problem. Because the buses, you would have to catch the bus, go downtown, get a transfer, wait some more to come to UT's campus and get off on Guadalupe. So by the time you did that... I could have been here. Mm -hmm. You could have walked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I did that. And what street did you grow up on? On Paquito, 1700 block of Paquito, which was mm -hmm. it's probably, let's see, Paquito, uh, Selena, you know where the uh, cemetery is there. Okay, going back, it's probably about four blocks from there. Anyway, it was quick. It was a quick walk back then for me when I was that age. <laughs> what were your first impressions when you arrived on campus? I, um, well, I didn't know anyone, except I did find out some of my friends. One friend that you met, she came to UT. And what was that friend's name? Elna, Elna Finner at that time, Elna Finner Andrews now. And we would um, stay a lot together up on the third floor and then in the library as well. What were your expectations of how things would be 
when you arrived on campus? Um, I knew that it was going to be somewhat of a challenge because of the size of the campus and not really knowing my way around. I, uh, we had um, maps and things like that, but it was such a coincidence. The year that I started in September of 60, 65, whenever it was, but mm -hmm. it was the year that uh, the big Carla hurricane, uh, you probably don't remember that, but it was a terrible hurricane that hit the coast, and we got all of the effects up here, I was at that first, and I was out in the weather uh, trying to get from one place to another with an umbrella that wouldn't <laughs> work <laughs> because the wind was blowing it. But that's what I really remember my first time, you know, being here was, was like in September and that hurricane was magnificent. And it's what was the name of the hurricane again? Carla. Carla. Hurricane Carla. Hurricane mm -hmm. Carla. Mm -hmm. I was trying to find my way around. Umbrella kept mm -hmm, inverting. Really? <laughs> Mrs. Wilson, do you recall what your professor's expectations of you were mm -hmm. as a student? Well, I think uh, it was my understanding that they wanted me to do just this uh, everybody else especially in those classes, the um, basic courses for freshmen. Um, and I never did talk to them very much because <laughs> the classes were very large, very, very large. And I just would try to follow directions, take notes. But, um, and I had to really learn how to uh, I guess, understand what was needed. I uh, caught on to that later, but I did not really understand the, especially the English classes, uh, when you would read something and you'd write. What I read didn't always match what the professor was expecting on my responses. But I found out that uh, what I could do in order to, I just had to kind of change my way of thinking in order to make sure I would get a better grade. Could you sit anywhere in class? Most of them. But in the large, the big auditorium classes, uh, I usually would sit kind of midway not too far to the front, and not certainly at the back. I never sat at the back because I really wanted to stay engaged. What was your living situation like in your first two years on campus? Mm -hmm. While living, I was at home. Did you stay at home all four years mm -hmm. until graduation? Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm, stayed at home. Can you share with us what your classroom interactions were like? The question just before the end. Yes, ma'am. I thought about that. Um, Please. Could you repeat it? Absolutely. The one about living situation? No, before the end. What do you think your professor's expectations of you were? Okay. Mm -hmm. While as a student? Mm -hmm. Most of them really they were they were pretty hard and they expected me to uh, I guess to they didn't want to change their way of teaching in any way like that they didn't do that it was just and I must admit sometimes I did not understand what was going on but I didn't ask questions not many, but I learned later to do that and to um, 
make appointments with professors. That was different for me. We didn't do that at school, you know, when we were in high school. We could always talk to our teachers. But that was something about making appointments and uh, talking with the professor one-on-one. -on -one. Out of curiosity, Mrs. Wilson, coming from an all-black high school, junior high, elementary, and then coming into UT, were there nerves, any apprehension, fear, anxiety? What were your thoughts about coming into the situation? Well, I, uh, I didn't fear it because I knew I wanted to go to school. And I knew I had to come here to UT because my parents had made, they, they were just, like I said, I always kept in the back of my mind that they wanted all of us to go to college. And uh, I never really thought about trying to go somewhere else after then. I just wanted to make sure I kept my grades so I could stay here. And um, um, I didn't, like I said, we had a little group that would get together sometimes, but I don't ever remember, maybe my, no, not until grad school did I get together with Anglos. It was mostly the black students. We got together and uh, kind of bounced off each other about our classes. The English classes were, I guess they were a little challenging because when we were in school, we did not do a lot of the reading and then writing interpretively because I just found out that the way I interpreted the writing, the reading, was not the way the professor was, and I had to learn how to do that uh, to, in order to get a better grade. I had to kind of think the way the professor was thinking. You've already started sharing this, and I'm curious. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your community of friends while as a student. Mm -hmm. We had, um, fortunately there were a few that came from Anderson and we were basically together a lot. Um, I had, um, let's see, some of the uh, young ladies that lived in Almutris as well as in Whitest dorm. Um, what were the two dorms again? Uh, Almetris Co-op and Whitest Dormitory. Yes, ma'am. And I knew some of them, you know, after being here for a while. I knew some of them. Of course, um, we were connected as far as uh, Rush, some of them. And that was a good thing because I got to know more of the black students on campus. Not, there were not a lot, but I did get to know some of them. Um, that's how I got into the sorority, through meeting some of those uh, young ladies. And it's interesting because there were um, the Anglos in our class. They talked about sorority stuff all the time. <laughs> and I did have um, a friend that was an Anglo girl. And the reason I knew her because her grand, her mother and my grandmother uh, knew each other. My grandmother worked at the uh, First Baptist Church. She was in uh, food service there. And, and this girl's name was Barbara also. Barbara's gr mother was a member. They were members of the church. So I think she was the first white friend that I really got to know. Did you two keep up with each other after graduation? A little bit. She did move out of state, but uh, we did kind of correspond. What were the names of other black students 
you knew and spent time with? Names? Yes, ma'am. Mm-hmm. Um, the McAfee's, they were Deltas. And uh, Griffin, Cheryl Griffin. And I'm trying to think. They were mostly Deltas that I knew. I knew a few of the AKs, but uh, most of them were Deltas. And most of them were living in Almetris in the co op, which is a little bit different because they had responsibilities there. And Whitest, I think it was, it was called a dormitory. So it was a little bit different from Almetris. Do you recall where those dorms were located on campus? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they were both on Whitest. Oh. And um, uh, let's see, Whitest was near a corner. And I think the, the music hall, music department was actually on the corner, but Whitest was the last, and then our mistress was next. They were just next to each other. They were like plantation looking houses. Mrs. Wilson, what did you do for entertainment when you were a student? Well, most of it was, um, I guess, we went to the movies. At the Harlem Theater, went to the movies. And this is on East Side. Mm-hmm. On 12th Street, on the corner. It's no longer there. They have torn that down. But um, was it close to Victory Grill? No, Victory Grill was on 11th. It's on 11th, still there. 12th Street was um, Chicago and 12th, kind of close to. I think it was actually Selena and 12th Street where the theater was. So we went to that theater. And one of the uh, parents of some kids that I knew uh, really went out and they just fought for a skating rink. And we did get a skating rink and that was somewhat of an activity that we would go to, skate around, things like that. Where was the skating rink? It was on 11, let's see. It's not not there, of course, anymore. It was about a block off of 35 on, is that that 11, 11? You know where the fork is? 11th and Rosewood, I think. And I think it's 11th Street. It was on 11th Street, about a block or two from 35. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. What was your relationship with the wider black community in Austin while you were a student at the University of Texas? The wider? Yes, ma'am. Oh, we had our own little things going on, parties and things, you know, those that especially during the holidays when all the kids would come back to Texas or to Austin. Uh, We'd always get together. And uh, we, in between then, we didn't do a lot. Everybody was studying, (laughs) was in school. So, um, went to church, church activities. Um, And Basically, that was it, really. What were the spaces where you felt most welcomed at UT Austin? Let's see. Probably later when I started taking a lot of education courses and the students that I uh, we were in classes together, a lot of classes, and we communicated and sometimes we worked in little small groups. Uh, usually we would meet somewhere in the union or maybe the library. Back then we were up in the tower, uh, in that library upstairs. And 
sometimes we'd have projects that we would, some of the teachers were good about giving projects and we would have to get together. Not all of them were like that, but I can see now that was sort of a way of bringing us together. Would you share your major and how you decided upon that major? Mm -hmm. Well, I always knew I wanted to be a teacher. Since you were a little girl? Mm -hmm, because everybody I knew <laughs> were a lot of the, you know, even the teachers that I had in school, everybody looked up to them and they were good people. And that was just one of those uh, careers that we just, at that particular time, many of us went in that direction. A lot of people in my church were educators and uh, in the community. How about the union? Was that a space where you felt comfortable? Yeah, up on the third floor. Third floor. Talk to <laughs> about this, this infamous third floor in the union. What's happening there? Yeah, we would meet. Uh, and that was just kind of in between time. Uh, a lot of us, and either there or downstairs in the lounge. Uh, but uh, the union, we could maybe connect with some of the uh, uh, upper class. And they would share with us. Uh, they've gone to a course that we're going to. They would kind of share something about the professor especially in the math department. Uh, they had some pretty strict ones there. And uh, I know one of the fellows who was a math major always advised us who not to go to <laughs> and uh, who were the best ones that he felt like we should uh, try to get into their classes. And I thought that was a good thing. They shared that with us. Did you receive any advice from upperclassmen on how to navigate UT? Uh, I guess it was more so through my sorority sisters. They uh, were very helpful in helping out with, um, you know, anything on campus. Now, I didn't spend a lot of time on I I was there on here on campus, but uh, and seldom, I, did, I didn't stay overnight or anything like that. I just would go home and uh, uh, stayed in the library a lot. But I think they, just, they somewhat kind of took care of it, especially our big sisters and I went into, uh, became a pyramid. They, they would kind of watch over us. <laughs> and then some of them were Austinites too, so I knew them from Anderson and in the community. You had known some of them your entire life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which is a beautiful segue into, did you participate in school organizations and activities at UT? And if so, which ones? None. <laughs> oh, just the sorority. What was the name of your sorority? Oh, Delta Sigma Theta. Mm -hmm. That was the sorority. Mm -hmm. How did coming to UT and spending time here impact you, Mrs. Wilson? It um, really gave me an understanding of uh, other people because like we had always been in a black school and we always lived in East Austin. We had, like I said, we had everything we needed over in East Austin and we didn't venture out very much. But uh, coming to UT helped a lot. It just, and it wasn't that I was afraid of anything, because I, I always felt like, and I guess it's the way our parents raised us, that we were just as good as the next person. And if you apply yourself, 
you things will come and uh, and that's what I've always appreciated about my parents was they they lifted us up all the time they always said you can do it you can do it just keep on and so this is what this is the way we were brought up. In what ways, from your perspective of being an Austinite, attending all education opportunities for the first part of your life through Austin, in what ways have things changed for African Americans at UT? Well, I guess I can say that uh, when I was in here at UT to do student teaching, I went to black school. I didn't have any exposure in white schools. Uh, and uh, it worked fine, you know, as far as I knew. But now, you know, with things being integrated and those type things, and while I was teaching, a lot of integration took place and you have to know if you want to stay there you have to know how to work with everybody children adults administrators and all i i i learned that and i think basically from the way i was taught at home i don't know if i really got a lot from you know ut it's just that uh, our parents taught us really how to, how to get along with others. And as long as it's not hurting you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And remind us, what year did you graduate from UT? In 66. 1966. Mm -hmm. Do you remember graduation day in 1966? Uh, I sort of remember it, but I don't remember the, I, I remember the big thing out on the, on the uh, East Campus. Mm -hmm. That's where okay. everybody congregated there. So, but, yeah, well, wait a minute, East, no, no, it wasn't East, it was where the horses are. Okay, okay. That's, that would be South. All right, I and. Think. You were the first in your family in terms of, of college graduate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember your parents, their feeling, the look on their faces? Yeah, they were excited. First yeah. in the family, mm -hmm. eldest, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you remember yeah. that day? Yeah, I do. They were real excited and they wanted to be there and they did, they were there. Uh, and it was, it was exciting, I felt. I was happy. <laughs> they were happy too. You said, I did that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very much so. Mm. Mrs. Barbara Louise Foster Wilson, <laughs> are there any stories that you would like to share or anything that I should have asked you that I did not ask you that you would like to share with us today? Mm. And this can be about UT or about growing up in Austin mm -hmm. or anything else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I've had the best. I, I really do. I really feel like I had a, even beginning school in Austin Independent School District, I had some good teachers uh, all the way through. I really felt like they were good teachers and were interested in the children. And I guess that's probably why I wanted to be a teacher as well. I had a few, I had an uncle who was a teacher and um, some of the neighborhood people were teachers too. But I, uh, I guess here at UT. Yes, ma'am. I really, I didn't have, like I said, we had basic friends that we knew and then a few that were um, black. I really didn't get a lot of white friends, but I learned how to work that out once I started teaching. <laughs> um, uh, even in 
in, in classes, especially those large classes, I found out. I had to, I wasn't a person who um, initiated a lot of conversation myself. I wasn't that type of person. And I kind of learned how to do that. That helped me. But um, I, um, back to UT, I, I, I feel like I really got a good education here. It, that helped me. The only thing, when I did student teaching, I yes, think I told you, they sent us to a black school. Where did they send you to, do you recall? Sims. Sims. Mm -hmm. Sims Elementary. Sims Elementary. Mm -hmm. And I think they've closed that school, if I'm not mistaken. But, uh, and it was good. It was good. Principal, I knew the principal. He went to my church. <laughs> but, uh, he anyway. went to Ebenezer? Mm hmm Okay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the teachers did too. But uh it was it was it was a good good experience. But I learned a lot once I started teaching, especially when integration when they changed and uh a lot of the teachers I started out in a school in East Austin teaching and then there was some desegregation and they sent us over to the other side of town and which was not that disruptive but it was disruptive to kids that was so sad uh, that they had to get up and ride a bus <laughs> to the other side of town can you give us a more concrete example flesh that out for us please well i can i know my brother my youngest brother had to, I'm just at Lamar, I think he was at Keeling. This is the, the youngest, the baby brother. Yeah, mm -hmm. he was at Keeling. And they transferred the kids in East Austin over to Lamar. And it was all on the news and everything, how they were, accept they were not accepted over there. And I just felt sorry for the kids more so in school then I me, mean, I was an adult. I was at um, still in East Austin, but I was sent over there to uh, Northwest Austin. Uh, but I found out the differences in the uh, supplies, materials were so different. You could, uh, when I was in the school in East Austin, you had to requisition for everything, a piece of paper or anything. And then maybe you would get it. But when I moved across to, uh, it was Wooten Elementary, the doors were open in the supply room. You just walk in and get what you wanted. We didn't know how to act. <laughs> I was going to say, did you recall that first day? And oh, you said, wait yes. a minute. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Paper yeah. Is, is overflowing mm -hmm. here. Papers, uh, construction paper, anything, paints, anything you wanted, the door was open. And that's the thing that really struck me, to see the differences uh, in the schools. So when you graduated, 1965? I actually, in 66. Six, 1966. Mm -hmm. so I had to take a... Uh, course when I was over in Germany. One course. One course. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> it mm -hmm. always seems to happen that way. Mm -hmm. one, one more mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. You graduated mm -hmm. and then when you came to teach you went to an integrated school? To teach started out in uh, all black. Um, and that's at Sims. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Excuse Sims. me, that's at Sims. Uh -huh. Okay. Because mm -hmm. no, that's where I did my student teaching, teaching. at Sims. Okay. And then the first school where I taught was actually in Del Valley. Really? That was in Del Valley first. Okay, okay. And it was um, mostly Hispanics and a few blacks at that school. And I didn't stay there long, but I think uh, my mother knew uh, one of the, in fact, her boss was married to the personnel officer in Austin. 
And that's how I really, you know, got on. <laughs> that's a wonderful, wonderful turn of events, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. She, they, she was my mother's supervisor, cafeteria supervisor yes, over the district. And um, she had told, um, she knew they always would keep up with us, and she knew that I would be looking for a job. And that's, her husband was the director of personnel. Wow. So it was just God sent. <laughs> it was truly meant to be. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Truly meant to be. Mm -hmm. I tell you, Mrs. Barbara Louise Foster Wilson, <laughs> this has been an absolute honor, an absolute honor. I say that as a student who's graduated from UT, mm -hmm. we literally are standing on your shoulders as a precursor. Mm -hmm. So I want to say thank you for today's interview. You're so welcome and I appreciate the interview. I really appreciate it. You're so kind and so, so easy to talk with. Thank you, I, I really appreciate this. And again, today is May 29th, 2022. My name is Dr. Autumn Cavanis. I've had the absolute pleasure of interviewing Mrs. Barbara Louise Foster Wilson <laughs> for the commemoration and contextualization initiative here on the University of Texas at Austin campus. Thank you. You're so welcome.